What's going on everyone? In this video, we're gonna show you how to tape your inside corners using an automatic taper. Now, if you're not already familiar with the basic parts and functions, make sure to check out our video entitled Beginner's Guide to Using an Automatic Taper. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. The first thing we're gonna do is raise our control sleeve to advance our tape. We're gonna manually turn our drive mechanism so that you can see we have mud on the tape. Very important when you're doing angles to give yourself a few inches of lead tape because angles do tend to drag more than your flat seams would. So we're gonna go ahead and get started here. You can see I'm holding the automatic taper just above the control sleeve. That way when I'm ready to do my cut, I just shift my hand down to the control sleeve and pull down to make that cut. Your other hand, you're going to kind of palm the back end of the tube. That way you have your fingers nice and close to the control, uh, to the creaser trigger here. So we're going to go ahead and get started and show you guys what that looks like. So we're going to start down low and as soon as we're able to get enough clearance, we're going to use our back hand to push that creaser wheel so we can tuck that into the corner of the angle as we start to roll up. And now about about three inches away from the ceiling and that's probably where you want to be to make that cut. So I'll pull down to make that cut and as I pull my taper go away and continue rolling with that creaser wheel, you can see just how close we are to that top angle. So if you happen to cut your tape a little short, you can see here we're short about a half inch from the ceiling, which to me is acceptable by the time you do your two other angles, those other tapes will hide that gap. But what you can always do is just pull up on your tape a little bit and raise it up closer to the ceiling. That way, if there's any gap at the bottom, it'll, it'll be hidden by the baseboard. So we just cut that tape. Now I'm going to roll my drive wheels on the wall to charge the head. That way, when I raise my tape, you can see there's already mud on it. So you want to advance yourself a few inches of tape. I got about two to three inches there. I'm gonna start with that in the corner. And as soon as you're able to get that creaser wheel in there, you want to push your creaser wheel Make sure it's nice and tight. Now, another thing when you're taping angles, if you look here at the top, you wanna to make sure that both your wheels are touching that inside corner. You don't wanna be taping down here like this. Your tape will go all sideways on you. You wanna keep it perfectly level like that. So you can see I have the taper kind of at an angle to my body. These are fairly low ceilings. If the ceilings were higher, you'd probably have to tilt your taper even higher up the wall. So continue rolling with our creaser wheel, tucking our tape into the corner. And when you're about two to three inches away, you pull, and there you go. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go at my regular, my regular pace for taping the rest of the corners in this room and you guys can kind of just follow along. So again, leaving myself a few inches of lead tape. I start at the bottom, as soon as I have enough clearance to get my creaser wheel in there. Do that, cut when you're about two to three inches short, mm -hmm. uh, charge the head, advance our tape, start in the corner. As soon as we have enough clearance, again, we're getting that creaser wheel into the corner. About two to three inches short, we're gonna cut, gonna charge the head again. Now you can see we're a little high. I'm just gonna pull it down a little bit. There we go. Charge ahead, advance my tape. And we just ran out of mud. So that's that safety pin. We spoke about this in our beginner's guide video. So when you run out of mud, there's a little pin that pops up, which, which engages this little lever, which disengages your drive mechanism. So that way you're not winding the cable and accidentally snapping that. So you can tell as you're going along when you run out of mud because your tape will suddenly be dry. So I just ran out of mud on that corner. So now I'm going to disengage my drive mechanism. I'm gonna flip the taper upside down onto our gooseneck and then I'm going to pump it up. Go. I can feel the plunger reach the top, so I know it's full. Going to re-engage our drive mechanism, manually advance a little bit, a little bit of mud on that tape, and we're going to finish off the rest of this angle. 
And there we go. Now we're ready to start rolling and flushing. So now that we have our room taped out, we're going to grab our corner roller, kind of put that in the corner, and we're gonna just lightly roll it just to kind of set it in place first. And once it's in place, and I go over it and really push hard. When you're rolling a tape, you want to kind of start in the middle of your seam. You don't want to start along the edges because then your tape might roll up on itself. So you kind of want to lightly go over it, set that tape in place first, and then you can really push and get that excess mud out of the corner. Now this does occasionally happen. Your tape will roll up onto the ceiling if you didn't roll it evenly or if your creaser wheel didn't tuck it quite in the corner. So I'm just gonna pull that down, readjust that, finish rolling that angle. Now, if you're using your angle head for the first time, you might notice for your first pass that it might be a little hard to get that mud out of there to give a proper fill. So it's not a bad idea to take a little bit of mud and just kind of manually with your finger, add a little bit to the back of the angle head. That way it's nice and full. So now the mud that's already on the wall is gonna be used to fill the edges of the tape and it's not filling your angle head beforehand. So now we already have a little bit of mud on there. We kind of loaded our angle head and now we're ready to flush. We're gonna put that in the corner, push firmly. You can see angle heads are spring loaded so you can kind of see the flex that's there. Now we're ready to start wiping. So what you're looking for is a full even pass. You want your tape to be as full as possible So we like using a two and a half inch angle head when we're taping. You can see it leaves a really nice even fill. This is what you're looking for. You want to try to avoid areas like this or like this. You can see the mud didn't quite fill the edge of the bevel or up here. So that's what you want to try to avoid. If you're using a three inch or a three and a half inch angle head, there might not be enough excess mud to properly fill the edges of those tape. Now we're gonna just go over this and you're gonna see that this is gonna get filled because we have a little bit of excess mud. Now you can see that tape is nice and full, except for maybe right here a little bit. Try to get that, there we go. In between rooms or when you're not using your roller and flusher, it's a great idea to just put them in a bucket of water that way they don't dry out too much. It doesn't have to be a full bucket of water, even if there's only an inch or two, just to keep them damp. You don't want that drying up so that when you start your next run, you're gonna get a bunch of dried mud in your angles. You also wanna make sure to clean the bottom of your tapes. That way you're looking out for the finishing carpenter. You don't wanna leave big blobs or chunks of mud like that. Cause then obviously it's not gonna be great for the baseboard. So clean the bottom of your tapes when you're all done. All right, so we just finished taping, rolling, and flushing this room. And you can see, if you look closely, we got a nice, even fill of mud on both sides of that tape. That's what you're looking for. If you get kind of uneven spots, odds are your mud is way too thick, or you're using an angle head that's too big, so it's not picking up enough of that excess mud that spilled over from behind the tape after you rolled it. So if you're not getting a nice even fill, either thin your mud down or use a smaller angle head for your tape coat. You can always use a bigger angle head when you come to do your finish coat. So I hope that quick video on taping your inside corners was helpful. For more tips and tricks, make sure to check out our other educational videos with Level 5 Tools.